true life. I went on vacation and my fridge is empty. It's never happened before. Almost never. You almost never see the fridge like this. And so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to see how we could eat for a week for as little money as I could possibly spend to get us a pretty robust amount of groceries. And I did it. So honestly, sometimes I struggle with the idea of an extreme grocery budget challenge because I have a lot of food already on hand. So this is the perfect opportunity for me to actually do one or more of like a realistic extreme grocery budget challenge where I bought everything kind of from scratch. I was away, I did a Walmart pickup order and I just tried to order for as little as possible to make sure that we had a really full week of food and hopefully some leftovers for the weeks ahead and then I can start rolling things over again. So the fridge is empty, pantry still has a few things in it so I will definitely be working with my grocery budget checklist next week. If you don't know what that is, I will link it down in the description box. It's just a checklist you can go through in order to kind of save money on groceries every week. I guarantee you it will save you. But if you're in a bind and you don't really have like that pantry backup, to get you going, I'm gonna recommend this grocery plan. We're gonna get seven days worth of food for five people and then some uh, for right around 115 bucks. So here's everything I got on my Walmart pickup order. I just wanna show you, you know, exactly what I purchased. It is the kids' first week of school this week. So we needed a few more um, kind of lunchy things that we're gonna make sure that I'm packing lunches for them. They don't, they do buy lunch some days, uh, but this week it wasn't their favorite, so. We're, we're going with packed lunches and we're just going to keep it simple. I didn't want to make a ton of stuff because we just got back from vacation. We're just going to be getting in the swing of things. So we're going to keep it simple. I got some milk, which looks like it got dropped on the way in, but that's okay. Thank my husband, Dan, for just bringing in the groceries in general. I got a bunch of Nutri-Green bars. These are going to be great for the lunches. Also just to keep around at home as a snack. Went with the Great Value brand to keep the cost down. I got some tortilla chips. We're gonna do some black bean uh, crunch wraps. So instead of using meat in a crunch wrap, we're gonna do black bean style. I've seen those uh, kind of like on the internet. So I grab some black beans. We're gonna utilize these and roll these over because this is, you know, I could have got like a can or two to do that, but instead I figured, hey, let's buy the black beans in, in here, make them up, and then we're gonna use them for something else. And I'm actually gonna make a Mexican chicken fried rice. I've never made anything like that before, so I'm excited to try that out. We're gonna use the black beans in that. I snagged this red pepper. We're gonna do a Cajun chicken pasta, and we're also gonna put that in our fried rice. We got 60 eggs. These are, thank goodness, back into the budget category, and I was able to get them for around seven bucks, and this is gonna get us through for breakfast, and I'm probably even gonna boil some up and do some hard boiled eggs just for snacks and stuff. For the kiddos for lunch, we're doing ham and cheese. They love ham and cheese. So this will get us through the week for the two of them and then some, and I mean, simple as can be, right? The tortillas, these are for the crunch wraps. Cheese, this is for the crunch wraps. And then also we're gonna do some chicken and bacon ranch um, baked potatoes. I'm excited to try that so we can put the shredded cheese on that if we need to. I got some lettuce. This is for the crunch wraps and also for salads on the side so that we have lots of veggies. I got 14 bananas so that every morning we can have at least, the kids usually do like a half. Um, Dan and I might have some, you never know. I got these mixed fruit cups. I could have gotten fresh fruit, but these ended up being, they seem like they're a little bit cheaper and they're just like really nice to put in the kids' lunches. So keeping it simple, like I said, um, just need to have lunches that I can put together easily. The Cajun chicken is gonna be with an orzo, so I snagged this orzo. So you could've got rigatoni and that would've been a little bit cheaper than the orzo, um, but I wanted to do the orzo, so here we are. Spent a little bit more on this, is a little over a dollar versus I think the rigatoni is like 98 cents. I'm gonna do a soup. Um, so I got some saltine crackers just to go on the side, and of course saltines are such a deal, you get so many of them, and it's a great little snack for the kids too. They do love them when I buy them. And I don't buy them all the time, so it kind of is almost like a special treat, even though they're super inexpensive when I do get them. Uh, we got some rice for our rice dish. I got some kidney beans. We're going to do two things with these. I'm going to be making up a uh, Panera bread turkey chili for our lunches this week. And that's like what Dan and I are going to eat all week, unless we're doing like leftovers if we have it. And then I'm also gonna make a uh, vegetable soup. That's what I'm gonna um, serve the saltines with. So these are gonna be perfect in that veggie soup. Edamame, I believe, my memory is that this is for the um, 
chili, but it may also be for the soup. I think it's for the chili. I just got these real bacon bits. These are super inexpensive. It's like $1.70. And I got these for the chicken bacon ranch um, potatoes. I got a bunch of apples, three pounds of gala apples for snacks. These are great with peanut butter. This is less than $2 for this container of peanut butter. And you can do that with the saltine crackers. You can do that with the apples. I got a cucumber. This is just to either like make with salads with the lettuce or um, to go with the kids' lunches. I do like to put a uh, veggie in there. So it would be either uh, cucumbers or carrots. I got a tomato for the crunch wraps. Just one, these are super cheap. The Roma, they hold up really well. It's like 50 cents. Sour cream also for the crunch wraps. Also nice, like we have this whole bag of chips and we're not gonna use all that for the crunch wraps. So that's like another like snacky thing. Like if we wanna have chips and we can have sour cream, uh, we could have salsa, queso. We're gonna have lots of extra of that. And then that will also technically, you know, that can roll over into next week, um, which will be great too. Then I've got some stewed tomatoes. I think these are for the soup garlic. I always try and buy some fresh garlic. These are like 50 cents. It's going to give you so much flavor in all of your food. There's plenty of things that we're going to put the garlic in. Same thing with onions. And funny enough at uh, Walmart, for some reason, three pounds of onions that were the organic ones were cheaper than the regular. So that's what we got today. And I will put this all in a blog post for you so that um, you can see like everything I purchased, how much it cost, and then um, exactly like which each of, what each of the meals were and what that included. Then tomato paste, I needed a ton of it. I, I probably should have got like a really big container of it, but I got two of these and then one of these. And one is for like, an, um, one is for the rice. And then two of these are for the chili. We got jalapenos. This is for the rice. And then I can use it in anything else I want to. Like I might even put some with like my baked potato. Um, and I think there might be this in the Cajun pasta too. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head kind of everything. I got some butter. You're going to need that in some of the pasta dishes. We're going to need that for breakfast because I did get two loaves of bread. The kids are going to have toast and eggs and banana for breakfast. They'll eat the same thing every day. We're going to keep it simple, like I said. I got a big pack of chicken breasts. We're going to use this for Cajun chicken pasta. We're gonna use it for the um, chicken, bacon chicken ranch um, baked potatoes, a chicken and potatoes in the Instant Pot. So I have chicken here and we're gonna make this work because I'm using like with the potatoes, you don't need like a lot of chicken. Like I'm just gonna shred up one chicken breast. And then um, even with like the Cajun pasta, we only need like two, we're gonna slice them and then we're gonna use, you know, have a lot of orzo in there um, and then for the chicken breasts, for the chicken in the Instant Pot, we just need like two or three. So I think it'll all work out. You can kind of stretch your chicken, make it work with everything. I got a big five pound bag of carrots because those are gonna be a great snack and they're also gonna go well in our vegetable soup and they're also gonna be in the chili. So you can utilize these kind of anywhere. Sometimes also like on the side, like if I don't wanna do a salad, I'll just slice up carrots and slice up some cucumber and then make like um, between this sour cream and the milk and then I have ranch seasoning already on hand. I can make like a ranch dressing or ranch dip. Corn is gonna be for the rice and then also for the soup. I got the beef broth. This is for the soup. I know I needed more of these anyway. So you get 25 in here and it's like, a, I think it's like two bucks. So I'll have that on hand now, which is gonna be great. The chickpeas are for the um, chili. Green beans are gonna go on the side with our Instant Pot potatoes and chicken. Toast and then also sandwiches for the kids for the week. Queso is for the black bean crunch wraps. So is the salsa, but this is gonna be more than we need for just that. So we should have extras, which is awesome. Could even put that in our baked potatoes if you wanted to kind of mess around with that. And five pounds of potatoes, could probably get some breakfast potatoes going too if I need to or I want to if there's like leftover from the baked potatoes. But it should be a pretty robust week of meals and we're eating for about, it's like $3 a day per person, something like that, which is pretty reasonable and I think we're gonna eat really well.
So what I'm gonna do this week is I'm going to prep our lunches, like me and Dan are having the Panera bread turkey chili. So I'm gonna make that first. I'm gonna make up some hard boiled eggs just to have those as snacks. We'll be making the kids lunches. They're gonna have the same thing all week. So I'll show you exactly what that is. And then we'll just show you dinner. So really what I'm gonna focus on is six really solid dinners for us. And then usually by night seven, we have plenty of leftovers or sometimes we'll do like a midweek thing where we eat leftovers. So either way, six solid meals for us during the week is gonna be plenty of food. And then we're gonna have that leftover meal and that should be absolutely perfect. So a lot of times budget cooking just does mean that you need to keep it simple. I find it easiest to keep it simple at breakfast and lunch. So for breakfast, we just did scrambled eggs, toast and banana. For the kids for lunch, they just had ham and cheese sandwiches. They had a banana if we had extra, some cut up cucumbers with ranch dressing, or you can make a ranch dip out of that uh, sour cream. They had those blueberry bars and some of those little fruit cups. And I kept it simple, pretty much packed them that all week. That was plenty for lunch and snacks. And for an after school snack, apples and peanut butter was perfect. And I also had apples for the lunches when we ran out of bananas. So that kept it simple for the kids, but for my husband, Dan and I, we wanted something a little bit more robust. So I made this copycat Panera bread chili that was absolutely delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make it. So we're gonna get our week started by cooking up the kidney beans or red beans. And I'm just gonna cook mine up in the Instant Pot. You always wanna start by rinsing your beans and squirting them, making sure that there's no pebbles in there. Then just pour the uh, kidney beans into your Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot, I will put a recipe for stovetop soaked kidney beans uh, in the description box. And you can always just buy canned ones. It's gonna cost you maybe a dollar or two more. So it's not gonna make a big difference. I just like doing them this way. And I do find that I, I think it saves money over time. To the beans, you wanna add eight cups of water. And we're gonna pressure cook these for 30 minutes. So I let this rest for 15 minutes and our beans are perfection. This is super easy. I did this while Gunny was getting ready for his nap and having his lunch. And now I have the beans that I need for uh, soup for dinner tonight, as well as some chili. Okay, the beans are done and now it's time to get started on the Panera chili. We're gonna need two chopped onions and then two chopped jalapenos. Gonna de-seed those. And then for cutting up items, the only other thing I need to do is cut up about a cup and a half of carrots, just chopped small. Then to cook this chili, you just wanna add a couple tablespoons of oil to the bottom of a pan over medium heat. And you wanna make sure that this is like a big stock pot enough to make soup. And then I'm just adding in all those onions and those peppers. And you just wanna add in your turkey and kind of brown all that and cook up the onions and peppers until that turkey is fully brown. And then if there's like some grease in there, you can definitely drain that off. Mine wasn't really too greasy, so I didn't need to. Then I added two 12 ounce cans of tomato paste. Now this is doubling the recipe. We're just not doubling that ground turkey in there. Uh, so you definitely you know, wanna do half if you're only making half. And I'll put the recipe down in the description box for you so that you can do the single recipe or double it if you like. Then I'm just adding in two cans of drained and rinsed garbanzos or chickpeas, whatever you wanna call it. And then two to three cans of those cooked up kidney beans. And I just use the can, like the empty can of garbanzos and do that about three quarters of the way full. And that's how I know, you know, how many I need. And then I just have one package of frozen edamame. I didn't need to like microwave it or cook it up or anything. I just put it right in there because everything's just gonna heat up and cook in that pan. And you can use about two cups of that or just like that one package is perfect. And then add in your carrots. And then I'm doing eight beef bouillon cubes and then eight cups of water. And then I drained out my can of corn and I'm adding about a cup of corn. I'm gonna save the rest of the corn for my vegetable soup. And then for spices, we're using two tablespoons of cumin, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of oregano and three tablespoons of chili powder with about a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of salt. So just simple chili spices. And you just wanna give this a good mix. There's so many good things in here. You really wanna make sure that that tomato paste gets mixed around and you wanna bring it up to a boil and then you're gonna reduce the heat to medium low, cover and cook for 45 minutes. And you're gonna get lots of flavor in there once everything cooks together. This was a lot of chili. It kept us full all week long and we really loved it. Today we're gonna to be making creamy Cajun chicken orzo. And to make this, I'm gonna be slicing these chicken breasts in half. I'm just gonna put some olive oil on these chicken breasts, sprinkle them generously with Tony Cheshire's or whatever Cajun seasoning you like. Um, I think I saw a bunch of people using 
this kind, so I guess this is considered Cajun. Creole, right? Should be okay. Should do the trick. We're gonna bake these at 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. These are a little thinner, so hopefully 25. For our fresh veggies in this, you just need one onion chopped. I'm gonna use about half of our red pepper chopped because we wanna use it for our, our Mexican rice too. You can definitely grab a second red pepper because technically you might wanna use a whole pepper in both recipes, but we are being cheap and I know that my family doesn't love red pepper anyway, so it's fine. And I'm bumming because this pepper is no good. You can't tell from the outside. So no pepper for us. Then we're gonna mince up three cloves of garlic. All right, so you're gonna need a skillet that you can put a cover on, I think, and then we're gonna put two tablespoons of butter and then cook that up with our onion. And if you have pepper, use the pepper. Okay, now this is cooked down after about five minutes. We add in our minced garlic and just give that a stir until fragrant. Then a tablespoon of your Cajun seasoning, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, I'm gonna stir this around and kind of let it bloom. I think that's a word for it. Let the seasonings bloom. Get more flavor if you do it this way. And I'm gonna add a little over a cup and a half of orzo. So this is great. I'll have this actually left over for next week. So maybe I could do like a orzo salad or something. Maybe I don't even use it next week, but this is another pantry item that I've purchased. I'm gonna use a packet and a half or a teaspoon and a half of chicken bouillon. I did not purchase this, but you can purchase it for about a dollar for like six to eight of them, depending. Oops, I added more than I intended. Hopefully it won't be too salty. Do a cup and a half of water to that. If you have chicken stock or chicken broth, you can just use that. Then we're gonna add four cups of milk. Then you just wanna kinda continuously stir this until it comes up to a boil then you're going to reduce the heat and keep stirring it for about eight or nine minutes so it's definitely something you kind of have to pay attention to for a while and then my chicken was done after about 25 minutes perfectly cooked like so juicy and delicious so i just took that out until my orzo finished so this recipe is adapted from a tiktok one and i originally was a little nervous about the four cups of milk it just seemed like so much but now that it has finally come to a simmer, which did take more time than I anticipated, it uh, is actually thickening up. So I'm super happy about that. I do want to keep stirring it because there's milk in it and I don't want it to like stick to the bottom of the pan. But I think it's going to get pretty creamy and delicious. So we've got about six minutes left right now. So it's pretty much eight minutes on the dot and I just turned it off. It's still going to sit on the heat a little bit here, but I feel like the telltale sign that it's done is you see how the you can see the bottom of the pan. It's like coming away. It's really thickening, thickening up. I just tasted a little bite. First of all, it tastes delicious. Second of all, the orzo is perfectly cooked. So this is pretty much it at that eight minute mark. I wish the color was better here. Like I feel like it's not really like giving, doing it justice because it does have a really nice color, but for some reason the lighting is just meh. But we'll see what we can do to get some nice color on it when it's completely done. We are gonna do a squeeze of lemon. I have, I had fresh on hand, just a random lemon, um, but you can always use the stuff that like I keep in my fridge all the time. Then another pantry item, Parmesan, about two tablespoons. We're gonna do some fresh cracked black pepper as well. Definitely missing the red color of the peppers in this, but oh well. You definitely don't have to pre-slice your chicken, but it does look beautiful over the top of the orzo. So I just sliced mine up, served it right on top of that delicious, creamy Cajun orzo. And this was absolutely fantastic. It is such a nice meal and amazing how you can do something that feels like almost so gourmet uh, in a budget-friendly manner. And this makes a lot of orzo. I had extra, luckily Ben absolutely loved it. So it was a good lunch for him. Uh, but we ended up with this huge portion, which is really more than one, and then all that orzo too. So tonight we're having the, we're gonna have chicken and bacon ranch baked potatoes. I washed up five potatoes. It's gonna be more than we need, but I thought maybe I'd do some breakfast potatoes for at least Tommy in the morning if he'd like some, because he likes those. I'm gonna wash and dry your potatoes, and then we're gonna put olive oil over the top, maybe a couple tablespoons, and salt, and just get them nice and covered. Poke them with a fork, 
and then bake them in the oven at 300 degrees for 90 minutes. There are many different ways to cook a baked potato, so you can choose your poison. Not a poison, these are good for you, but you can choose your way to make them. Uh, we're just doing it this way because I have plenty of time right now. So I'm just gonna make up the chicken for the chicken bacon ranch potatoes, but I'm also gonna make extra, and we're gonna use that for our Spanish um, fried rice. And of course, we're gonna use the TikTok blend. And if you don't know, you should know, the TikTok blend, the garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, salt, and pepper. And I'm just gonna fry them up on a frying pan until cooked all the way through and then slice them up. So I'm just filling these with chicken and then I do have cheddar that I could use, but I do not wanna waste. And I have this on hand, it's like one of the last things that was in my fridge, so we're gonna use it. And then I'm just topping these with the real bacon bits. And then we're just gonna put these on broil for about like three or four minutes. You just wanna watch them closely and they should be bubbly and delicious when they come out. And then I'm gonna drizzle over some ranch dressing. I happen to already have some, so I just used what I had, but you can make ranch out of the sour cream um, milk and some ranch seasoning, which I always keep on hand. I pretty much consider that a pantry uh, staple. But these are a delicious dinner. They're pretty indulgent for sure. And they really feel like something special. I just served ours with a salad. I did add some croutons because I just had some on hand. Again, I just wanted to use what I had, um, but delicious. Today we're making Instant Pot chicken and potatoes. And um, this is gonna be good because I have two pieces of chicken here. I wanna use these up. I'm being strategic about this because I have two pieces of cooked chicken that I can use in the fridge. And those are gonna be for um, some Mexican uh, fried rice. But because those I cooked yesterday, they're gonna be good for longer than the chicken breast I haven't cooked yet. I am going to use, this is maybe about a pound and a half, two pounds of potatoes. And I'm gonna cut them in kind of like a medium dice. And I'm just gonna put them in this bowl here. I'm gonna slice my chicken in half and then we're gonna mix it with some spices. I have a teaspoon and a half of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried thyme, a half a teaspoon of oregano, a half a teaspoon of basil, and then two tablespoons of ranch seasoning. And then I think I need to use some, what is it, bartender's friend on this or something, but soon. I have one cup of chicken bouillon, or you can use chicken broth. First, we're gonna place the chicken in the Instant Pot and then top the chicken with the potatoes. Cover on, set it to ceiling, and then cook on manual for 10 minutes. Once your timer goes off, you just wanna do a quick release and then just serve it up. So I put ours into like a nine by 13 or you can put on any serving dish. I sprinkled it with about two tablespoons of ranch seasoning. You can use whatever type of seasoning that you want. And then I did have some Parmesan cheese on hand. So I've decided to garnish it with that. You can, you can top it with anything that you have on hand, anything that you like with it. And then I did make up the green beans. So that's just a can of green beans. I cooked those up with just about a half a tablespoon of butter and a half a packet of chicken bouillon and I just like them that way. Sometimes I'll do like the Cajun seasoning too. It's a super simple, super flavorful way to make green beans. Overall, this is a super hearty and delicious dinner and it's done in like 20 minutes. So good. For this next one, I'm making Mexican fried rice, something I had never made before and it was so delicious. I love it, love it, love it. I'm just cooking us the black beans. I rinsed them and uh, took a look through, make sure there was no pebbles in there. Dumped them in my Instant Pot. I'm just gonna add in eight cups of water and then we're gonna cook this on manual for 30 minutes and then let it slow release for 20. And in the meantime, we just had a little chips and salsa because I knew we were gonna have some extra and it's a perfect little snack. So my black beans are done. It always looks like this like endless black hole, like you don't know what's in there, but then Hello beans, there they are. So I'm gonna use these right away by making some Mexican fried rice. So I'm just dicing up one of our onions and we'll put some oil in the bottom of a pan over medium high heat. We're gonna saute these until translucent, probably about five or six minutes. Once those are translucent, you wanna grate in or just mince up two cloves of garlic. So I'm just gonna cook this until fragrant. Just about a minute. And then just a cup or so of the black beans. I'm gonna do about half of the canned corn that I saved the other day. 
Then for seasonings, we're gonna do about a half a teaspoon of cumin, quarter teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Coated. I'm gonna let everything kind of get well coated, cook up a little bit in the bottom of the pan just for a minute. Then I'm adding about a quarter cup of salsa. And then two to three cups of cooked rice. I know I bought brown rice, but it was so funny at the time I couldn't find it. I have since found it, um, but I just used the white rice that I had around my house. We're also gonna add in all of our chicken. So I chopped up the two half breasts that were left. This is a lot of chicken. This is gonna be a hearty meal. So this is cool. This is definitely giving me like fried rice vibes. That salsa and the, and the seasonings are almost acting as like the um, soy sauce would be. We've got lots of goodies in here. If, I, if that pepper was good, I would have added about a half a red pepper diced, but we don't have that. So instead, it is what it is, but it looks quite good. I'm excited. I just served ours with some shredded cheese, salsa, sour cream. I even had like a little hot sauce I drizzled on that, but you can put any of your favorite toppings on, whatever you have. It's absolutely superb. Today we're making black bean crunch wraps. So I just have my cooked beans and I'm just gonna season them up and heat them up a little bit. So I have some garlic powder, chili powder, and ground cumin. Just gonna kind of mush these and cook them up and just warm them up. So it's more of like, almost like a refried black bean. And we're gonna need some shredded lettuce. Also known as shreddice. Then I have the rest of my tomato here. I'm gonna dice this up. All right, to assemble the crunch wrap, you wanna take your queso, put that on the bottom here. Oh, cheese, black beans, chips, sour cream. This is not fancy. Lettuce and tomato then you want to fold it you just kind of fold each side up over and over in a little circle shape and you'll just see it just like fits perfectly it's amazing how it all works out and then we're just going to cook these on a pan over medium high heat you want to crisp them up on both sides so just wait for that first time side to crisp up flip it over crisp it up on the other side you kind of want to get it you know warmed through slice it in half or just eat it whole whatever you want to do these are so delicious they are an amazing way to make like that fast food thing that you love which is uh, for me a crunch wrap uh without any meat like this was so inexpensive and the family absolutely loved it you can see ben here <laughs> And unfortunately, I never got to making that vegetable soup. I will put that down in my blog post, uh, the recipe that I intended to make, but we had so many leftovers. I was even able to make burritos with those leftover black beans and leftover rice, and everything was just so delicious. There was so much lunch meat <laughs> left over. We were able to have more sandwiches over the weekend. And there was plenty of extra food to roll over into the next week. To learn how to use your pantry items that you already have and cut down your grocery bill, you want to check out this next video where I go over how to use my stick to your budget checklist in more detail.